So we're going to take a look at something called periodic trends. Um, to start with, there are certain properties of atoms that are affected by their electron configuration. You know, because you've learned, learned how to do electron configurations, that as you move from atom to atom around the periodic table, the electron configuration of that atom changes in a very regular way. If you move, for example, across a period, you know that you go 3s1, then 3s2, and then the next thing will be 3p, 3p1, and 3p2, and then 3p3, and then 3p4. As you move across, it's a very regular change. If you go down a group, for example, down the alkali metal group, you have electrons. The outermost electrons will be in 1s1, 2s1, 3s1, 4s1, 5s1. It's a very regular change. Well, because of that, these properties that are affected by the electron configurations, they're also going to change in similar ways. So we're going to look at uh, three big ones. One is called atomic radius. Uh, the second is called ionization energy, and the third is called electronegativity. And that's probably going to be the most important one that we're going to need to think about when we think about how atoms bond or why they bond the way they do. So atomic radius. First thing, we're basically talking about the size of an atom. Um, because the size of the atom is defined by the edge of the atom's orbital, uh, and those edges are very, very fuzzy. They're hard to figure out where they are. In order to figure out how big an atom is, the only way to really do it is to take two atoms that are bonded together, have them just touch. If they're bonded together, then they're going to be touching. Their orbitals will be touching. Figure out the distance between their nuclei and then take half of that. That's the only way you can really determine the size of an atom's radius. In other words, how big the atoms are. And uh, there's a process called uh, X-ray crystallography, which you can uh, click the link and go and read all about that if you're interested to know how they do that sort of thing. If you look at this, this is basically the main group elements, not the transition metals, just the main group elements, and a little picture depicting the relative size of the atoms. And you can see that as you go down a group from the top, say hydrogen, down to lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, the atoms get bigger. But look what happens if you go across a period. Look at lithium to beryllium to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. The atoms are getting smaller. So the general trend around the periodic table is that as you go down a group, atoms get bigger. As you go from left to right across a period, atom gets smaller. Now why? What's causing this? Well, there are a couple things that we have to consider. The first thing is, is, as we go down a group, the valence electrons in those elements are going to be found in higher and higher energy sublevels. So you know that um, lithium, for example, its valence electron is in 2s. Now right below that, sodium, its valence electron is in 3s. Well, 3s is higher in energy than 2s. And remember, one of the most important things we learned, the more energy an electron has, the further away from the nucleus it is. So the electrons in, in 4s are further away from the nucleus than those in 3s, which means as you go down the group, the atoms are going to get bigger because their electrons, their outermost orbital, is going to get further and further away. But as you go across a period, well, the electrons in the valence shell are in the same energy level. So all the way across the second period, from lithium to beryllium and so on, all the electrons are in the second energy level. So they're not moving further away. As a matter of fact, because they're staying in the same energy level, and because as you go across a period, the nucleus becomes more positive, well, that positive nucleus pulls the valence electrons in even more strongly, and it actually makes the atoms smaller. Ionization energy. Definition is that if you want to remove an electron from an atom, you want to create an ion, ionization, uh, you have to add some energy. And so ionization energy is the amount of energy that's required to remove one electron, but from a gaseous neutral atom. So the atom has all its electrons. Normally, it's neutral, not an ion. And it's in the gas state, because if you try to do this to a liquid or solid, all you're going to do is change the physical state. You're going you're gonna to melt the solid if you add energy to it, or you're going to boil the liquid if you add energy to it. 
So we have to already have a gas. Then we add enough energy just to take away an electron. Where, where does that electron come from? Well, from the outer most electrons, the valence electrons. Looks like that. Here's your atom. You add some energy. You get the ion, positive ion, plus an electron. This is measured by looking at individual atoms so that there's no interactions with nearby atoms to interfere with it. It's a very cool process. If you look at this image, what we have here are, again, the main group elements. We don't really mess with the transition metals all that much. And the numbers in each of these squares is the number of kilojoules, thousands of joules of energy per mole of that element required to take away those electrons. So in order to take away hydrogen's only electron, it takes 1,311 kilojoules of energy to remove a mole of hydrogen atoms' electrons. Well, that's a lot of energy. Hydrogen doesn't like to have its energy, its electron taken away. Look at the trend. Look at how things change. So forget hydrogen for a second. Look at lithium and then sodium and then potassium and rubidium and cesium. What's happening to the amount of energy? Well, it's going down. And if I go across, say, to lithium, to beryllium, to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, the amount of energy is getting greater. As I go across a period, it takes more energy to take one of those electrons away. So why is this? Well, if we go across a period, it takes more, elect more energy to remove an electron. So the ionization energy goes up, the amount of energy required to remove an electron. The reason is electrons are added in the same energy level and the nucleus gets more positive and pulls them in. As I go down a group though, it takes less and less energy to take an electron away. Why? Because the valence electrons are getting farther away from the nucleus. And that means that they're not feeling attracted to the nucleus as much as they could be. It's easier to take them away. So ionization energy increases as you go across from left to right, it gets bigger. But as you go down a group, it gets smaller. Finally, we have electronegativity. Now, I like to describe electronegativity as electron greediness. In other words, the tendency for an atom to want to take an electron from another atom. The stronger the nucleus is pulling on those valence electrons, the greater that electronegativity is going to be, the more it's going to want to pull on other electrons. So if you go down a group, we already know the atoms get bigger, the valence electrons get further away, and that means that the electrons aren't really going to be attracted to the nucleus. The atom's not really going to want to take on more electrons. So the electronegativity goes down. But as you go across, remember, the electrons don't move further away. As a matter of fact, they get pulled in a little bit closer because they're all in the same energy level, but the nucleus is becoming more and more positive as I go across. And since that's the case, the further across towards the right I go, the more those electrons are pulled in, the more electronegative the atom is going to get. Another thing to consider is that the closer an atom gets to having a full valence shell, all the S and all the P electrons, the more electronegative it gets. So electronegativity increases left to right, and it decreases as you go top to bottom, or increases as you go bottom to top. One thing that's very important to understand here, the noble gases, because they're stable, they don't want any electrons, so their electronegativity is zero. The rest of the elements are measured with units that are technically called Paulings, but don't really have any meaning. So electronegativity is just a number without really a measurement. It's not really a unit. It's just a way of comparing how greedy these elements are for electrons uh, compared to other elements. So that's a lot of information. I want you to try the questions below. Go back and watch this video again. Take notes if you need to. But what you need to remember are the, the trends, the way that the atoms change in terms of size, in terms of ionization energy, and in terms of electronegativity as I move across a period or down a group.